Hi everybody, my name is Lonnie Bowling and today I'm going to start a new video series on how to get started using the Pi SDKs. Um, after you're done with this, uh, going through the series, hopefully if you haven't used the SDKs before, you'll um, have a basic understanding of what they're about and how to use them to do typical tasks that I'll be going over. Um, when I first started uh, using the Pi system, I was not aware that these SDKs existed. And um, over time, I ran into some problems, and I needed to uh, uh, come up with some kind of a custom solution. And that's when I stumbled upon them uh, at vCampus uh, on the vCampus site, and I got really, really excited because I just felt like, okay, this is this isn't something that I'm used to seeing uh, from just a, a, a any other type of system that I've used before in the past. This is a very uh, extensive SDK that allows me to basically do anything that I want uh, programmatically on the Pi system. So it's really, uh, it's really powerful. It uh, gives you the ability to let your imagination go wherever you want to go with it. And, um, and it just gives you a lot of capabilities that other otherwise you would be missing out on if you didn't know how to use or if you didn't know what the SDKs were about. So the goal of this series is to help uh, explain what the SDKs are and to get somebody started on it that maybe isn't familiar with any of this stuff. So I'm going to be talking kind of at a, at a very basic level and it's just uh, strictly to try to get you up to speed and going as quickly as possible on using uh, these SDKs and coming up with some really cool stuff. All right, so without uh, any further, let's go ahead and dive right into it. What I want to do um, in this first part is to go over just a little bit of history of how the SDKs uh, kind of uh, came about That'll help uh, give you some understanding on um, these different letters, what they mean, and kind of uh, give you some context of, 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 of what they are. Uh, I'll talk about some differences between them, and then um, we'll just go into how to get them installed on your computer. And uh, we'll take a quick peek at the documentation. I'm going to be really uh, going back to the documentation throughout the, se throughout the series just to show you how, um, how you go in and you kind of read that documentation and figure out what are the things you can do because there's no way that anybody can explain everything uh, that you can do but if you understand how to work this documentation you'll be in a really good spot on um, how to come up with uh, with new techniques to accomplish whatever it is you need to all right okay so uh, the uh, SDKs what are they and uh, what's, what's some of the history well way back in the 90s I think the Pi system might, might have even came out in the late, late 80s this is before I was ever uh, working on them I've only started working on them in the last five years or so but anyway there was the Pi, S, Pi API and that was the original um, way for people that are programmers to get in and start working with the Pi system so the Pi API is no longer used it uh, it's still supported um, but it's no longer uh, it's it's no longer being added to or expanded. It's pretty much been locked now for a number of years. And OSI Soft will recommend that you do not use the Pi SDK or Pi API uh, for starting any type of new project. Now, of course, if you have an old project uh, that's depending upon this and you don't want to rewrite your code base, then you can go ahead, you know, um, keep working with it with that uh, that product. But um, Sometime around 2000 or maybe earlier, Pi, the Pi SDK came out, and this was uh, intended to replace the Pi API. And this was a new, more modern type of uh, SDK that was based on Microsoft's uh, COM uh, framework, so that's Component Object Modeling. And that was, uh, back in the day, that was uh, what everybody was doing, and it was really great technology, cutting edge. Um, but eventually, even even uh, um, the Pi SDK has become antiquated at this point. And uh, probably about four years ago, um, or five years ago now, maybe six, the um, Asset Framework came out, which is part of uh, which was a big uh, a big uh, addition to the Pi product, uh, the core core product offering that OSI Soft has. So there was a Pi system that was just it's just about storing archive data and then uh, asset framework came out also known as AF and that gave us the ability to give some structure to this data um, when AF came out um, there was uh, 
a um, SDK that was also released, and that uh, SDK was intended to work with the AF part of it. So there was a Pi SDK and AF SDK side by side. And then I, uh, if you've seen this graphic, I also have the um, uh, AN SDK, and that's for uh, notifications. Um, the notifications SDK, when, uh, when, when Pi notifications came out about three or four years ago, they also released an SDK. So there were these three SDKs that had been around now for several years. Um, last year, the last release of the AF SDK took everything that the Pi SDK can do and integrated it into it to give us one single SDK that we can work with when we're dealing with the Pi system, either be it the, um, the Pi historical uh, um, data, data historian or the um, asset framework uh, part. This will um, allow us to program against any of that using this SDK. So that is uh, going to be the SDK that we'll be working with. It's the latest one that's out and I want to talk about some of the changes that have happened now that we're not um, going forward. We're really not going to be focusing on the older Pi SDK anymore based on component um, com and we're going to be using the new uh, SDK, AF SDK, which is, which is based on uh, .NET Framework. Okay, so that is a real brief history. Now um, to, to get your software installed you need to head over to vCampus. I am assuming that you have a vCampus subscription um, and if you don't you'll need to get one so that you can be authorized and licensed to use the SDK. Um, vCampus is a great resource for um, learning about uh, all the ways that you can program against the Pi system, uh, not only with the SDKs, but also other, um, other uh, data access models and stuff like that. But it's really a site for programmers and it's a site for us to exchange ideas and to kind of talk about what we're doing and get help when we need it. And also uh, help answer questions if, we, if, we're in a, if we've had a similar experience and we can help somebody out. So anyway, uh, you'll, you'll need to head over to vCampus, go to the Download Center, and what you want to grab is, uh, uh, you want to grab under AF um, Asset Framework, you want to grab the, uh, the Pi Asset Framework, uh, the Client 2012 Service Pack 2 install at the time of this video. It could change when, uh, when you're watching this later on, but anyway, you want to get something uh, equivalent to that. And if you notice here, it has the Pi SDK, uh, 1.4.2, but it also, uh, and it has the um, Pi SDK, AF SDK. So these are the two SDKs that we're talking about, but we're really only going to be using this, this single uh, AF SDK as we're doing our work. So anyway, once you download that, I already have it downloaded on my desktop, uh, you want to go ahead and install it. Um, and uh, this is a similar experience when you're installing uh, any of the OSI soft products. You'll, uh, you know, it'll extract the files to a temporary folder, and then it's going to take you through the installation process. Now, I already have this installed on my computer, so I really don't need to go through this whole whole uh, uh, exercise again. But I just want to show you what it looks like, uh, and you can see here. Here's all the items that are getting installed, and you can see in in my situation they're they're already they're already here. So now then the. the um, the last item that I wanted to talk about in this first part is the documentation and where do you find it. Once you have this running, you need to start up the um, Pi System Explorer and uh, connect to a uh, connect to a, uh, a database. And let me get my password in here. And once you're once you have uh, the Pi System Explorer up that you can get to the documentation really easily. And I'll show you where to find that. You go to help and just go to your help topics. And here's the uh, um, the uh, help file. And let me get this a little bit smaller so we can um, get a good size here. If we go down um, under here, you see the AFSDK library reference. And from here, there's a uh, there's a whole uh, a bunch of a whole bunch of information. Let's see if I can make this a little bit larger. Okay. There's a whole bunch of information about uh, what's what's in this library, um, and the what new page is kind of uh, interesting. I think uh, 
and that it'll it uh, goes through, tells you what's going, what what was added um, in the latest version, and um, you can go through read you know any any the latest latest details. It's really good documentation. It gives you a lot of good details. The one thing that I did want to point out here is there's this Pi SDK equivalence. This is really nice if you've been using the older SDK and um, how uh, what's what's the equivalent now in AF SDK because remember I told you AF SDK basically has taken everything that the Pi SDK can do and now put it in put, has put it into the AF SDK. And uh, here you can see this is what the old SDK was looking like. Uh, these are the things that you're using, and now this is what the new AF SDK is, is using. And there's, uh, there's uh, uh, it, it tells you a lot of uh, great uh, information about, um, you know, how do, how do you work with these items, and, uh, you know, what are, the, what are the equivalents now. So we'll be, we'll be going, into, um, going into what all this is about, and, uh, you know how how we can use it as we're kind of navigating around and trying to figure out how to how to take advantage of all the stuff this SDK can offer. Okay, so we've talked about our documentation. We've talked a little bit about the history of uh, what the SDKs are about, and we're really going to focus on the AF SDK, which is going to be now the whole system we can program against, which is really really awesome. And uh, the next part, I'm going to uh, dive into doing some programming. So hopefully you'll stick with us, stick with me. I'm going to talk about getting some connections set up and we'll start uh, accessing the data. So stay tuned. Um, I'm Lonnie Bowling and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.